The cell phone calls were fake, no question about it. So how is it possible to fake a person's voice? In 1999, the Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico revealed their voice morphing technology. General Carl W. Steiner, the former Commander-in-Chief of United States Special Operations, declared on tape, Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. Another example was Colin Powell, saying, I am being treated well by my captors. With just a 10-minute recording of somebody's voice, they are able, in almost real time, to clone someone's speech. Steiner was so impressed, he asked for a copy. So what about the hijackers? On September 14, 2001, the Department of Justice released the names of the alleged 19 hijackers. But on September 23rd, the BBC reported that Walid al-Sheri was alive and well in Casablanca, Morocco. They also tracked down Abdulaziz Alamari, who was an engineer with Saudi Telecom and lost his passport while studying in Denver. In the same article, FBI Director Robert Mueller admitted that the identity of several of the hijackers is in doubt. So how many hijackers turned up alive? At least nine of them. Well M. al-Sheri is alive and well. Mohand al-Sheri is alive in Saudi Arabia. Khaled al-Midar is a computer programmer in Mecca. Salem al-Hazmi works at a chemical plant in Yanbu, Saudi Arabia. Saeed al-Gandhi is training to be a pilot in Tunis. Ahmed al-Nami is an administrative supervisor for Saudi Airlines. We already covered Walid and Abdul Aziz. And last but not least, Mohammed Atta's father claimed to receive a phone call from his son on September 12th. On September 20th and 27th, Mueller admitted on CNN that there is no legal proof to prove the identities of the hijackers. Indeed, after all, not even the official autopsy for Flight 77 lists the hijackers. And the opening paragraph makes no mention of their absence. So, if there's no proof that the hijackers were members of Al-Qaeda, or if they were even on the plane in the first place, what justification do we have for bombing Afghanistan? Oh, that's right. The Bin Laden confession tape. On December 14th, 2001, the government released a tape, allegedly of Bin Laden confessing to the attacks of September 11th, which they claimed to find in a house in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Except there's a number of things wrong with this tape. 1. The tape itself is of very poor quality, and 2. The man in the video looks and acts nothing like Bin Laden. According to the FBI's website, Osama is left-handed. Yet, in this video, he's writing a note with his right hand. Not to mention he's wearing a gold ring, which is forbidden by Islamic law and is never mentioned in the FBI's description of him. Compare this video to four other pictures of Bin Laden. Does anybody else see a problem here? Until the government can prove without a shadow of a doubt that Al-Qaeda was behind September 11th, the American people have every reason to believe otherwise. And now for the last question of all. Why would our government do such a thing? I hope you're sitting down. First we have Larry Silverstein, the man who purchased the World Trade Center in July 2001. After September 11th, Silverstein demanded $7.2 billion from his insurers, claiming that each plane counted as a separate act of terrorism. However, on December 6, 2004, courts only reward him with 2.2 billion dollars. Next we have the put options that were placed on United Airlines, American Airlines, and Boeing. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, more than 2.5 million dollars has remained unclaimed. As for 9-11 itself, Reuters reported that Comvar, a German computer company, is responsible for helping companies and accountants in New York restore their data from over 400 hard drives that were recovered from the World Trade Center's rubble. 
Convar recovered information from 32 different computers that suggested insider trading took place on 9-11. Richard Wagner, an expert at Convar. There is a suspicion that some people had advanced knowledge of the approximate time of the plane crashes in order to move out amounts exceeding $100 million. They thought that the records of their transactions could not be traced after the mainframes were destroyed. After their analysis, Convar handed the results over to the FBI. Although the FBI was legally bound to investigate who was responsible, to date they have done no such thing. Moving on. According to Wikipedia, one of the world's largest gold depositories was stored underneath the World Trade Center. In 1993, the value of the gold was estimated at $1 billion, rumored to be owned by Kuwaiti interests. When the World Trade Center was destroyed, the amount of gold far exceeded the 1993 levels. The gold was finally recovered in its entirety in late 2001. Or was it? On November 1, 2001, the Times Online reported that a large amount of gold was discovered in the wreckage of the World Trade Center. Mayor Rudolph Giuliani announced that more than $230 million was recovered from Ground Zero. However, the Comex Metals Trading Division was storing gold bars for the Bank of Nova Scotia, Chase Manhattan Bank, Bank of New York, Hong Kong, and Shanghai Banking, totaling $950 million. And that's just one company. Rumor has it that over $160 billion in gold was stored in the World Trade Center. So where did all the gold go? Remember the gold that was found in November 2001? Reuters reported that it was discovered in the back of a 10-wheel truck, along with several cars, in a delivery tunnel underneath World Trade Center 5. No bodies were recovered. As workers got closer to the gold, authorities began restricting access to Ground Zero, joined by FBI and Secret Service agents. One worker, who was directed away from the tunnel, told a reporter, If I tried to go down there, they would have shot me. Heavy machinery operators and others worked under the watchful eye of more than a hundred armed officers. So let me get this straight. Gold from World Trade Center 4 was found underneath World Trade Center 5 in an empty delivery truck with an empty escort of cars. I think it's safe to say that they were running away from the South Tower. The question is, how did they know to flee from their stash when not even the firefighters inside the South Tower expected it to collapse? $167 billion in gold. $200 million is found. And that's just the money. Yet there is no After September 11th, President Bush had and continues to have permission to do and say whatever he wants, all under the pretext of 9-11. The Patriot Act. The Department of Homeland Security. Afghanistan. Iraq. It's time for America to accept 9-11 for what it was, a lie which killed thousands of people, only in turn killing hundreds of thousands more to make billions upon trillions of dollars. Are you angry yet? You should be. Every single attempt to investigate and uncover the truth behind 9-11 has been blackballed, ridiculed, and harassed by both the government and media alike for even daring to question the official story. Jimmy Walter, who spent nearly $2 million on an advertising blitz to convince people here in New York and elsewhere that 9-11 was a self-inflicted wound. Jimmy, welcome. Uh, why are you doing this? I'm a patriot trying to defend this country from the real terrorists who have damaged and changed our country. I am asking the same questions that the widows and orphans, parents and friends of the victims of 911 are asking and have not had answered by either the 911 Commission nor by any real investigation to the mass murders okay. that 66 percent of New Yorkers want investigated. Okay, Jimmy, let me I'll say it again. Why are they hiding from us? What are they hiding from us? And what's it going to take until people in this country give a damn and do something about it? America has been hijacked, not by al-Qaeda, not by Osama bin Laden, but by a group of tyrants ready and willing to do whatever it takes to keep their stranglehold on this country. So what are we going to do about it? Anything. Share this information with friends, family, total strangers, hold screenings, conferences, whatever you have to do to get the word out. It's up to you. Ask questions. Demand answers.